Okay, so welcome to our lesson today. And today we are going to look at some pediatric uh, questions. So we'll start with, um, so we'll start with uh, sepsis, a question from neonatal sepsis. Then we'll move on to another question, okay. So uh, the question reads, Miss Krista Bionambela, aged 20, uh, aged 20 years, underwent a prolonged assisted labor and delivered by way of vacuum extraction to a live mature female infant with an APGAS score of 4 out of 10. 48 hours later, fever of 37.8 degrees Celsius and a bulging anterior fontanelle were detected and a provisional diagnosis of neonatal sepsis was made. So question one is saying define neonatal sepsis. So question one is saying define neonatal sepsis. So we can define neonatal sepsis as this is, uh, this is a pediatric condition in which there is generalized infection due to invasion of the bloodstream by the bacteria characterized by raised body temperature, which is fever, lethargy, and uh, also cyanosis or bulging anterior fontanelle. So the definition again, you can define in neonatal sepsis as this is a neonatal condition in which there is generalized infection due to invasion of the bloodstream by the bacteria characterized by you can even bring in the same characteristic in the definition such as bulging fontanelle, uh, raised body temperature, and uh, apart from that, you can also say cyanosis. So uh, when it comes to um, neonatal sepsis, here the infection has spread to the entire part of um, the body. So you, we don't know which route, it could be maybe poor cord care, uh, or maybe it could be uh, something uh, due to injury, maybe there is, uh, like for example, in this one, there was vacuum extraction. So it could be maybe due to vacuum extraction, there is injury and then uh, and, uh, sterilized instruments can introduce uh, bacterial infection in the body. But once it enters the bloodstream, it spreads to the entire body and you see this baby affected. So you see characteristics such as bulging fontanelle, which we have uh, uh, also talked about in the examination of a newborn to say, if you see a bulging fontanelle, meaning there is infection. So you may see that as a characteristic. Apart from that, there will be raised body temperature. So here in the scenario, you can even see that the body temperature is about 37.8 degrees Celsius. So for a newborn, this is too high. Then apart from that, we have talked of, um, I mentioned cyanosis. So cyanosis, this is due to reduction in oxygen carrying capacity. So whenever there is infection, there is reduced oxygen carrying capacity by the remaining red blood cells or unaffected red blood cells. So sepsis is, is spreads through the systemic circulation and Apart from the other parts of the body being affected, the meninges may also be affected in sepsis. So that is how you can define neonatal sepsis. Then B1 is saying, so when we go to B1, so when we look at B1, it is saying state five predisposing factors to neonatal sepsis. So state five predisposing factors to neonatal sepsis. So when it comes to predisposing factors, uh, the first one we can talk about is um, maybe um, poor uh, hygiene during delivery. So poor hygiene during delivery, you may find to say maybe the delivery room is not properly sterilized 
or not properly clean it, it may predispose uh, the patient and the baby to infections. Apart from that, it could be prolonged labor. So in prolonged labor, you'll be required to do frequent VEs. You'll be required to do frequent VEs, which may introduce infections to the body as you are, to the baby as you are doing frequent VEs. Then uh, apart from prolonged labor, it could be another predisposing factor factor is early rupture of membranes. So in early rupture of membranes, uh, it may predispose the baby to infections because maybe the membrane may rupture even be before the baby is ready to come out, meaning the, the opening will be, there will be no protective uh, barrier between the baby and the external environment, meaning whatever infection, if there is infection, urinary tract infection, they may ascend and affect the newborn whose immune system is not even fully developed. The other predisposing factor is prematurity. So prematurity, uh, here in prematurity, it's because the baby is premature and uh, the immune system is not fully developed meaning the child is easily, can easily be affected from any simple infection. So that's how prematurity can be a predisposing factor to sepsis. Apart from that, uh, we can talk of RDS, respiratory distress syndrome. So in respiratory distress syndrome, the reason why it is a predisposing factor, I know you, some of you are wondering, the reason why it is a predisposing factor is because in RDS, there is systemic endothelial damage. So in RDS, respiratory distress syndrome, there is systemic endothelial damage. And this is what predisposes the child to infections. So when there is a systemic endothelial damage, remember RDS is also called higher line. Okay. So you, you, okay, so the network is a bit slow. Let me just share the screen again. So in RDS, in RDS, you realize that because uh, the systemic endothelial damage, because the systemic endothelial damage, the, the internal organs or internal body tissue are now exposed. So even with a, a, just a simple cough, it can predispose the child to, uh, to sepsis because there's nothing that will be protecting uh, the lungs from uh, infections, bacteria, and other things because the endothelium or the endothelium is damaged. That's why it is also called hyaline membrane disease because you see formation of hyaline membranes like the entire epithelium is shed off and now it is trying to repair itself. So it is during that period when the entire membrane is shed off due to continuous friction of two membranes, that's when there can be endothelial, systemic endothelial damage and giving access to bacteria or preventing bacteria because the endothelium basically is the other protective uh, tissue just like the skin, but without the skin, meaning your internal organs are exposed. It's the same thing that happens in RDS. So that's how RDS uh, is a predisposing factor to, uh, to sepsis. So that's how RDS is a predisposing factor to sepsis. So I've mentioned, uh, I think more than five. The other one, the other, uh, Okay, I've mentioned prematurity, RDS, um, contamination during labor, prolonged labor, early rupture of membranes. So uh, those are the, the predisposing factors that you can mention and the many others that you can think of. So we are on question B1. So those are the predisposing factors that you can mention as to cause neonatal sepsis. Then the question B2, so question B2 is saying, list five causes of neonatal sepsis. 
So question B2 is saying list five causes of neonatal sepsis. So when it comes to the causes, we are from talking about predisposing factors. And when it comes to the causes, think about it from the angle of causative organisms. So when it comes to the causes, the E. coli can cause neonatal sepsis. The same normal Escherichia coli that everyone has in the small intestine, which acts as the protective uh, bacteria in the intestine. But if this bacteria finds itself in systemic circulation or in a wrong compartment, it can cause major problems to the body. So E. coli can cause neonatal sepsis. Apart from that, um, pseudonomus. Pseudonomus is another a normal bacteria that is found in human beings and this one can be found in, um, in the large intestines. So even this one is, if it's found, it's a gram negative bacteria. So if it is found in, uh, it enters the blood stream, it may circulate and cause infection in the entire body. So apart from E. coli, pseudonomus, the other uh, causative organism or cause of neonatal sepsis is salmonella. So salmonella is another cause of uh, sepsis. When you drink um, milk and other uh, lacto products, you find that there is salmonella and this protect uh, you from having frequent suffering from diarrhea and everything else because salmonella also prevents um, or destroys other bacteria and it is a protective bacteria also in the human being. That's why people from Southern province, because they drink a lot of um, sour milk and other things, they rarely suffer from diarrhea because they, in sour milk there is salmonella. But if this salmonella finds itself in systemic circulation, it may cause major problems such as neonatal sepsis. Streptococcus infection, they may cause neonatal sepsis and also staphylococcus infections. So streptococcus infection, staphylococcus infection, salmonella bacteria, pseudonomous bacteria, E. coli. So all those, those are the most common causes of neonatal sepsis. So pseudonomas is P-S-E-U-D-O-M-O-N-A-S. So that is pseudonomas. Then the other question is saying, discuss in detail the nursing management you would give to Miss Krista Bernambela's baby from time of admission till discharge. So discuss in detail the nursing management you would give to Miss Krista Bernambela's baby from time of admission till discharge. So this question is specifically telling you to write the nursing management, meaning you don't have to include the, the medical management. So when it comes to the nursing management, so when it comes to the nursing management, you're going to take this as an infectious condition. So you're going to first of all um, do the uh, isolation, so infection prevention, I mean isolation, infection prevention. Then from there, you can talk about um, maintenance of uh, body temperature. If you look at the body temperature is high, so maintenance of body temperature. Then uh, the other thing is um, uh, you can talk about prevention of uh, hypoglycemia. So prevention of hypoglycemia. Okay, so when we go back to the question, sorry, I've just checked on the question. So it is it a live mature female infant with an APGA score of four over 10. 48 hours later, fever. Okay, so you can forget about the APGA score. This was uh, uh, recorded almost uh, three days ago, meaning if the baby is uh, survived three days later, meaning this was sorted out. So do not start with eh, resuscitation. 
we are going to start with infection prevention. So the way I've stated it, infection prevention, isolation, I mean infection prevention. Then from there, talk about um, uh, maintenance of uh, uh, body temperature, prevention of hypoglycemia, uh, prevention of, um, uh, of, um, of acidosis, so prevention of acidosis as another heading. Then uh, afterwards, you can now talk about, um, you can talk about psychological care to the mother. This is because you're going to isolate their child. So you need to, uh, at this point, you have isolated their child. So you need to give psychological care to calm the mother and also to gain cooperation. And also to gain cooperation. So those are going to be your immediate care headings. So those are going to be your immediate care headings. Then after the immediate care, you can now go to the observation. So you can do, you can go to the observation. Then after observation, you can bring in um, uh, nutrition or you can feed the baby using expressed breast milk. This is the most uh, cardinal nutrition that you're going to give so as to build up the immune system and also uh, repair dead body tissue. Uh, here you are not going to give uh, dextrose 5% or 10% because you would have talked about it in prevention of uh, hypoglycemia. So you won't talk about uh, dextrose, but if you didn't talk about it under nutrition, you would still talk about it. Uh, Dextrose. And then here you just say if the baby is unable to feed or, or breastfeed or intubate or insert an NG tube and feed the baby using the NG tube to promote nutrition. Apart from nutrition heading, you can talk about other headings such as hygiene. You need to do top and tail, you need to do cord care. You need to do eye care and other things. So mention those things in uh, hygiene. Bring in the other heading for medication. So since the scenario says just discuss the in details the nursing management, but remember for you to treat sepsis successfully, you need the antibiotics. So you can bring in the heading for medication. And in the heading for medication, Talk about the drugs that can be prescribed to this child. So some drugs that can be prescribed to this child, uh, for example, you can give x pen uh, a quarter to one mega, a quarter to one mega. Apart from x pen, you can also give, um, uh, you can give uh, a broad, another broad spectrum uh, antibiotic that can be given is, um, uh, I mean amoxia, so you can give amoxia 125 milligrams five days, which is uh, three times a day. You can also give gentamicin, so you can also give gentamicin, which is 20 to 40 milligrams, BD for five to seven days. So you can uh, mention all those drugs. Apart from that, also mention about, uh, because there's fever, talk about uh, paracetamol can say paracetamol can also be given, which is between 50 to 200 milligrams. And this is going to be given TDS for, for, three, for three days, yeah. So you can talk about all those drugs. So you're just mentioning them and their dose. So you say, I'll ensure that the, the patient or the Miss Christabel Nambela's baby receives medication such as gentamicin, x pen, uh, amoxil, paracetamol, and you mentioned their dose. And I'll explain the side effect and the reason for giving these drugs to the baby and the importance. So mention all those things. Then apart from medication as your heading, you can talk about, um, can talk about maybe elimination. I think that can also be okay. So you can talk about elimination. 
And since our last question is uh, IEC, which is saying discuss five points you include in your information, education, and communication to the baby's guardian. Meaning you are not going to, your last heading in nursing management won't be about IEC, but to just end on elimination since your last question wants you to write about IEC. So on IEC, five points on IEC here, you can talk about, uh, so on five points about IEC, you can talk about exclusive, uh, you can talk, you start with the important one, you can talk about hygiene, tell the mother about the importance of hygiene, which is code care, avoiding use of cow dung, uh, top and tail, or clean clothes for the baby, washing of clothes for the baby with the, uh, soap and everything else. So hygiene is cardinal. Apart from hygiene, immunization. So talk about immunization on your heading for immunization. Advise the mother to continue bringing the child for immunization and uh, subsequent, subsequent immunization. Then talk about review dates. So the review date is important so that you allow the nurse to detect any uh, problems or abnormalities and be able to attend them according to them accordingly. Apart from review dates, so I've mentioned the three, you can talk about um, medication, the importance of taking the prescribed medication. And then, uh, so th that is, um, I've talked of uh, medication, review date, hygiene, and uh, the other headings. So apart, and also immunization. Then um, apart from um, uh, those headings, you can also talk about um, you know what? So you can talk about, uh, teach the mother about uh, symptoms of escalating condition. So you tell them if you start seeing the temperature rising, there's bulging fontanel, meaning the condition is worsening, you need to come back to the hospital. And also you talk about preventive measures, how they can prevent uh, uh, sepsis, how they can prevent sepsis. You can talk about the preventive measures, which is basically maintaining hygiene, reporting cases early. If there's a problem, they come back to the hospital and everything else. So you can give uh, those five points, I've talked about more than five points on IEC, but you can give those points with the nice explanations and then you'll be able to get the full marks. So this is how you would have answered this question for sepsis. So whenever you are studying pediatric conditions, make sure you study about it. Uh, the infectious conditions. So go through infectious conditions. They are the same in terms of management and understand them nicely on how you can manage these infectious eh, conditions. Okay. So that is all about um, sepsis. So that is all about sepsis. So we can just uh, quickly run it through also uh, croup. I don't know if you have gone through or you have read through croup, which is uh, a laryngotracheobronchitis. So laryngotracheobronchitis. I don't know if you have read it through, if you have tried to answer certain questions in laryngotracheobronchitis or croup. So croup is another infectious condition. This is another infectious condition. So when it comes to laryngotracheobronchitis, which is LTB, you can define it as this is, um, this is a pediatric condition. So this is a pediatric condition resulting into inflammation and narrowing of the larynx and the trachea caused by viral infection characterized characterized by, so this is characterized by fever, uh, host, uh, voice hoarseness, and apart from uh, voice hoarseness, there's also difficulties in breathing. 
so when it comes to croup, this is a pediatric condition, just as you can see, it affects children mostly under the age of five years. So this is a pediatric condition. And in this pediatric condition, there is inflammation and narrowing of the larynx and the trachea. So there is inflammation taking place. Apart from inflammation, there is narrowing. That's why this condition is deadly if not treated fast because it can narrow and at some point uh, close the, the trachea or the, yeah, the trachea completely, making it difficult for the child to breathe. And, uh, and then apart from that, this, this is going to be characterized by voice hoarseness. So in early stages, you are going to see there will be hoarseness of the voice from this child. Then after that, whenever the child is coughing, the other symptom that can be seen is uh, a cough with a croup sound. So there's also a cough with a croup sound. A croup sound is more like a barking cough. So if you hear a dog barking, that sound is this. It is a similar sound that you are going to get from a child who's coughing, especially if it's a, a small dog which is barking. So that is the same sound that you're going to get. So that is uh, described as a croup sound, apart from having a horsey voice. Then apart from these two characteristics that I talked of uh, fever. So you are going to see low grade fever as another characteristic. And apart from low grade fever, and fever is because there is presence of infection. The backing cough is because of uh, irritation of the uh, trachea. Hoarseness of the voice is because of inflammation of the larynx. So that is uh, what is causing all those symptoms. I talked of low grade fever because of presence of viral uh, or virus in the uh, body. Then, uh, so those are the characteristics that you can mention, and that's how you can mention you can define uh, croup if at all it is given to you again but this condition came uh, it should be last year so uh, uh, predominantly croup is caused by viruses it is caused by viruses there therefore when it comes to treatment where therefore when it, uh, it comes to treatment it is hard to uh, to treat it is not treatable because it's viral so you'll be treating it symptoms until those symptoms clears then the condition may also clear just like coronavirus you will be treating symptoms to improve the patient's condition so it is the same thing that is happening in croup it is symptomatic treatment and 95 percent of the viruses that cause uh, croup or laryngobronchial laryngotracheal bronchitis is para influenza type 1 and type two okay then when it comes to um, clinical manifestations so when it comes to clinical manifestations uh, in clinical manifestations i've already mentioned some like ho voice hoarseness this is due to inflammation of the larynx then i also mentioned backing cough this is due to irritation of the trachea uh, low grade fever, I said this is due to presence of virus in the body. And then apart from that, I've also we can also talk about inspiratory striders. So inspiratory striders or striders in general, this is due to narrowing of the trachea. So this is due to narrowing of the trachea. So because of inflammation, there may be swelling. So because of... Uh, I mean, uh, because of the narrowing, the airway narrows, it becomes more like uh, big or relaxed. Sorry, uh, narrowing because, uh, so there's narrowing of the, in spiritual status, because of narrowing of the airway. So the, the airway narrows or becomes small such that when wind is passing, you are able to get the striders, which is a sound which is almost close to, uh, to a patient who has uh, asthma, but in the striders, 
it is not consistent. In asthma, it feels like a small whistle, but in striders, it feels like there is water inside, and then the sound is not so consistent. Consistent. Okay. So that is inspiratory striders. Then apart from inspiratory striders, the other clinical manifestation that can be seen is uh, difficulties in breathing, and this is due to narrowing of the, uh, of the airway. This is due to narrowing of the airway. There may also be in, um, uh, air, what are, um, so they could also be in, other characteristics or clinical manifestations um, such as wheezing itself. So wheezing may also be present and also productive cough. Wheezing is also the same reason is due to narrowing of the air where the airway has narrowed. That's why you are getting that wheezing sound. Then productive cough is due to the inflammatory process or due to inflammation of the larynx and the uh, the trachea. So due to inflammation of the larynx and the trachea or just inflammation of the airway. During inflammation, there is um, there are exudates produced when then whenever there is inflammation. So it, it's those exudates which may accumulate and then when the child coughs, they give out a sputum. So you can see those uh, as and you can give that as a productive Cough or describe that as a productive cough. The child will have that type of productive cough. So when it comes to treatment, so when it comes to treatment, like I've mentioned, croup is caused by a virus, meaning there is no specific treatment, but it will be symptomatic treatment. So mostly, maybe you'll be asked to manage this child using nursing management however if you are taught to to manage using for medical management it is rarely because you give symptomatic treatment so in terms of investigations i'll just talk about them but our focus will be for nursing management so in terms of uh, investigations uh, history taking so the baby may uh, the child may review history of um, of maybe voice hoarseness or a history of uh, low grade fever. It could be history of low grade fever, history of voice hoarseness. Then during physical examination, the child may present with a barking cough. The child may present with a barking cough. Radiological investigations, so you can do radiological investigations, um, such as, I mean, laboratory investigations, such as uh, a sputum to review the causative organism or virus. You can also th do a throat swab, a throat swab, which can also review the, the causative organism or for couch and sensitivity reactions. Then apart from that, you can also uh, you can also do a radiological investigation, which is uh, a chest X-ray. So when you do a chest X-ray, when you do a chest X-ray, this will review tripod signs. So when you do a chest X-ray, it will review or it will show a tripod sign, and this tripod sign. Uh, this this is where the the airway looks uh, a bit small on top, and then at the bottom it looks big. It looks like a wine bottle. So it is described that the tripod sign is best described as a wine bottle. On top it is small, then uh, down there it is big, so more like uh, narrowed. So that is what is called a tripod. Eh? Sign so during the geological investigation, which is a chest x ray, it will review the tripod sign. So you can do those, you can mention those investigations when it comes to medication. And I've mentioned it's symptomatic treatment, but the standard medication that you can give in almost, um, in almost 
uh, everything, even though you don't have specific treatment, you're going to give a bronchodilator. So you give a bronchodilator such as albutamo by a eh, nebulizer, and you're going to give this uh, five milligrams per two mil. So you give a bronchodilator such as albutamo by a nebulizer, which is eh, five milligrams per two mil. You can also give uh, a corticosteroid such as eh, hydrocortisone. You can give a corticosteroid such as hydrocortisone to reduce on the inflammation. And this one you can give it uh, between two to eight milligrams per kg body weight. So you can give a corticosteroid such as hydrocortisone and in a child you can give between two to eight milligrams per kg body weight. Apart from that, because of fever, you can also give paracetamol 52 uh, to 200 milligrams. So 50 to 200 milligrams. So you can give, you can mention those drugs. But if the question has specifically told you to start from nursing management, like the previous question that we were looking at, meaning you just mentioned these drugs in medication on the heading for medication. So when it comes to nursing management, this is an infectious condition. You are going to start with patient isolation, uh, then infection prevention, then apart from that, you need to talk about maintenance of airway, maintenance of breathing, maintenance of circulation, because these may be affected. The child may be breathing okay, but that's why you're not resuscitating as per se, but you're just maintaining, you're trying to sustain the patient's uh, life in that manner. Then after those headings, you can talk about psychological care to the mother because you have isolated their child. Talk about observation, talk about hygiene, nutrition. Uh, then apart from that, you can talk about exercise can be skipped. It's not applicable in this one. You can talk about uh, elimination. Then also, um, yeah, you can talk about elimination. When it comes to uh, complications of, um, of uh, croup, so when it comes to complications of croup, they could be anorexia and weight loss. So anorexia and weight loss. This is because the child is having difficulties to, uh, to breathe. So they will be having, they can't even eat. That's why there's anorexia and also weight loss. Apart from that, and they may also be the other complications, so it could lead to septicemia. Apart from uh, septicemia, it could also, um, the other complication is uh, respiratory failure. So the croup may also lead to respiratory failure. And uh, apart from that, it may also lead to uh, so the other complication can also be airway obstruction. So it could be it could lead to airway obstruction. And if the narrowing is not controlled, it may end up closing. And if if the narrowing is not controlled, it may end up um, obstructing the the airway such that it even leads to death. So the last complication that you may mention is death due to excessive or uncontrolled narrowing of the airway so the baby may even die so that is why this uh, condition should be treated with the agency whenever you notice to say this is cruel so that the child doesn't have or experience those side or those complications and also to be able to recover to help the child recover as fast or as soon as possible okay so